Hi everyone, welcome back to the workshop and it's repair time again. Now it's been about a month since I did a repair video. Reason being, I had a lot to do in the workshop. been doing some upgrades to my web server and my website. So if you haven't seen the new tools that I've put online, go and have a look at ianjohnston.com. Anyway, back to the repair. So I've got a WaveTech 1281, a much sought after eight and a half digit multimeter. And this one's on the bench for repair. Now the 1281 actually came from Datron. You might see some of these units uh, branded as a Datron 1281 and they look almost exactly the same. WaveTech acquired Datron in 1987. And then in 1998, Wondol and Goltermann acquired WaveTech before Fluke acquired the Precision Instruments division in 2000. But they kept the WaveTech name for the existing WaveTech products. Now this unit isn't actually mine, it's just a repair I'm doing for somebody and the person told me they got it home and noticed some of the boards were loose inside and they noticed a bunch of burnt traces near the inputs I believe. So it was powered up and it turns out there was a whole load of errors on the display. The owner cleared a few of them uh, and repaired some of the traces and then when measuring some signals it wasn't right as if the range screen had changed range but the path for it on the inputs didn't. So based on that, the owner did actually change out some of the relays. They bought a whole load of them and have actually got the old ones there and some spare new ones there as well. And that fixed some of the errors but threw up some new ones. So the owner thinks the relays are not being sent the right signal in order to switch. So we'll take a look at that when we get it powered up and we get inside. Okay, but before I tear it apart, I'm actually going to put power into it. Let's just see how the unit operates. Um, I'll maybe put a PDVS2 Mini on the unit and let's just see what the voltage range does. Uh, and let's see what sort of error codes it's got embedded in it at the moment. So let me just put power on. And the displays are a little bit dim, this one here especially. So let me just turn off the workshop lights which should help the camera and it's reading zero volts I've got no inputs at the moment it's already on DCV mode and yeah I can go through the modes and I do hear relays clicking not sure if you can hear that so it is able to go through the different modes and there's the different ranges there so it's on the 1 kV range at the moment. Let me just go along them. I don't hear any relays switching at all. And I would have thought that would have been required. So let's run a self test, a test button here. And let's run through the fast one just right now. And I can see it running through the, the, the tests there at the moment. And I do hear the odd relay clicking. So I'll just let that run and then we'll come back. And there's it finished. Fast test failed. And I can't actually list them. So let's just have a look. Failed ohms 2844. Yeah. A whole load of errors related to all the functions effectively. So yes, so I think the next thing on the list, I'll reset the power and I'll put in a PDVS2 Mini and let's just see how it responds to a 1 volt or a 10 volt signal, something like that. So let's go on to the 1 volt range. And it did change in the display here. Uh, let me put in 1 volt and it's not changing all the way up to 10 volts nothing at all so I'll back down to 1 volt and I'll just go through I should overscale the millivolt 100 millivolt one nope 
it looks like I've got zero volts. It thinks there's zero volts coming into the input circuitry. So yes, there's a definite problem with the unit. And just to see what some of the other functions do, let me get rid of the PDVS2 Mini. I'll go into ohms. Let's just choose the 1k ohm range. Ah, look at that. I mean, that's, that's without shorting the inputs. It already thinks the inputs are shorted. That's doing nothing at all. Let's try some of the other ranges. Yeah. So it looks like we do have a problem, possibly, with that input network of relays and uh, circuitry in order to switch the ranges there. So I think the next thing we'll do is we'll power off and we'll go inside and have a look. Well there's a top cover off and wow what a lovely unit inside. Definitely old school, all through hole plated. Looks like we've got a processor board over here and looks like we've got an input board here. You can see all those relays there. They're all Panasonic, so it looks like the, those ones are the ones that were changed out. But let's turn it over, take off the bottom cover and have a look under there. And here's the underside. A couple of nice toroidal transformers there. And yeah, a couple of boards under here. At the moment I don't know the function of these boards. Actually there's three. These are two here and some more of those relays so I'm not sure what's going on here there is a relay here with a, a red X marked in it not sure what that's all about a few ICs and sockets and a small cover over here there's probably some sensitive stuff under here oh yes there's a red X on this uh, on this little sticker here over these three components here so not sure what that's all about and we've got some precision resistors down here, uh, similar to what's on the other side. And I've just noticed the first thing, so let me just reorientate the camera here. We've got some of these clips here that hold the ribbon cables in place. This one's actually loose, it's not fitted properly. And this one over here is much the same, and in fact it's laying down shorted against a small header down there so I'll try and put those back not so sure that'll cause anything of a problem at the moment but in fact this one doesn't want to stay on so I'm just going to remove that one for the time being yeah so all in all I've removed four of those clips I've got another wee problem down here this header here is not actually pressed into place. So I wonder if that caused an issue. So that's it back in now. So I'm just going over everything else. Make sure it's plugged in. Well I think I've got to the bottom of the first problem and it's to do with the relays. So let me rearrange what I've got here in the box and tell you what I've found. Right, these are the original relays that were fitted and there's actually three different types. You can see the part numbers on the three different types are different. This is S2-L-6V then we've got S4-L-6V and we've got S4-24V. So obviously the digits at the end are just the voltage rating of the coils of the relays. 6 volts, 6 volts and 24 volts and the digits up front S2 or S4 are to do with the arrangement of the normally open or normally closed contacts of the relays. S2 means that there are four contacts in the relay two of them are normally open and two of them are normally closed. S4 means that they're all normally open and the L indicates it's a single coil relay because some relays you can buy have two coils one at either end they're latching relays in other words one coil energizes a relay and latches it 
the other one de-energizes it and latches it and these original relays are all single coil relays now out of the box I've only got two different types there is actually a third type as per the original set but they're all fitted to the board so what we've got here is an S4EBL25V an S4EB24V and what's fitted to the unit is an S2EBL25V and looking up the data sheet for those relays I think the S4EB24V is perfectly suitable that's a 4 form A and 4 normally open contacts single coiled 24 volt relay so the 24 volt one is good to go however the other two the S4 and S2 EBL25Vs L2 refers to a two coil latching relay which we don't have fitted to the 1281 so I think the relays were ordered two of them are not suitable and only the 24 volt one is wow so no much wonder the unit can't change ranges now if we look at the data sheet for the Panasonic relays you can see the layout there there we go for the 2 form A, 2 form B, 2 normally open, 2 normally close relays etc. On the latching ones as you can see here, you've got the extra coil is at the far end of the relay. Where in the ones that are not latching, those pins are not used. So luckily the relays that were fitted that were latching that have a coil here shouldn't cause any problem on the circuit board by having a basically a short circuit well 130 ohm something like that between pin 7 and pin 6 the problem is this coil here on the latching relays that have been fitted you can set the relay but you can never unset it now looking at the layout drawing here you can see I've highlighted the Panasonic relays that have been fitted because not all the relays have actually been changed out so it looks like on this board anyway, the DC assembly board, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven relays have been changed out. And here they are on the corresponding bill of materials for that board. There's the relays down there and confirming that yes indeed S4-L-6V and we've got S2-L-6V and of course S4-24V. So the three different types of relays. Now, of course, the other issue I've found is that the original relays, or most of them anyway, are 6 volt relays. However, the ones supplied, the Panasonic ones, they're 5 volt. Now, Panasonic do make 6 volt versions of the exact same relay. So, my question is, is it correct to fit the 5 volt ones, or will the 6 volt ones do? So we need to look at the schematic that drives these relays and find out what voltage has been applied across the coils. Now here is the schematic for the DC assembly, or part of it anyway, and we've got some of the relays up here. So let me zoom in and I'll take you through how this part of the circuit operates. So here's the relay coils here. You can see you've got a bunch of them down there and that's some of those 6 volt ones. And you can see you've got pin 1 and pin 12 there coming in from the left and from the right. So if we start over here, we've got a 4555 IC. That's just a demultiplexer IC. You can see the inputs there and also the 8Q outputs on the other side there. And one of the signals there comes away through here onto this buffer IC here. It's actually a logic buffer but it's a three state buffer so it's got an enable line there you can see on that pin one there and actually they're in two banks of four of that IC so there's two enable lines one enable line for this bank of four and then another enable line for the second bank of four now these two ICs here are powered by the plus 15 volt rail as you can see and there's just a pull up resistor 15k on those enable lines. So the output of this IC here is going to be 15 volts or effectively open circuit high impedance or 0 volts. And it comes straight through 
onto one side of the relay coil. The other side of the coil comes from the output of this op amp here. There's a push-pull transistor set up here with a 61.9 ohm resistor on its collector which effectively and very generously on the schematic there's a little plus 7 volt there that's been annotated on the diagram and I think what that's saying there is you're going to see 7 volts across the coil I think this logic will go down to 0 and then the other side there will go to 7 volts energising the coil so 6 volt relays are probably the bare minimum you would want to go for something like this I think it's pushing it with a 5 volt relay coil I'd be inclined to put 6 volt versions back on the board. Now I would actually like to verify that uh, plus 7 volts there and I have actually gone ahead and done that because there is a test point TP801 and it's sitting about 6.8 volts. So I think yes, I think we do need to go for the 6 volt relays. So that's it for this part one I think. I'll get back to the owner of this 1281 and we'll see if we can procure uh, the correct set of relays for the board and I'll change them out into part two and we'll see where that takes us. So thanks for watching and remember you can always comment down below and don't forget to like and subscribe. It really does help the channel grow. There's plenty more repair videos on my channel from the simple to the complex. Check them out and thanks for watching.